Good day everyone. Oh man, what has the cat dragged in this time? Oscilloscopes! Three of them! I was passing by the tech shop at school and they had a whole pallet of old oscilloscopes outside the door. About a dozen of them. And uh, I asked inside, even though stuff placed outside there usually means they want it gone, I asked anyway just to make sure you know it wasn't waiting for anyone in particular and they said no they're they're all up for grabs so uh, I took three of them here two of them are identical because one of them's actually gonna go to my friend Brandon but uh man I've never owned an oscilloscope so this is totally awesome I've always wanted one they're an incredibly useful tool if you dabble in electronics like myself let's uh, see what we got here this one up top is a Gold Star model OS9020A 20 megahertz oscilloscope from probably the late 1980s. There were only two or three of these on the uh, pallet, so I figured I'd grab one. The rest of them were these. These are Iwatsu model SS5702 from the earlier mid 1980s. That's what the rest of them were. Although there was one larger Iwatsu scope, um, these are also 20 megahertz, there was one larger, fancier 40 megahertz model there that I was originally going to also get for myself, but uh, it had quite a few functions on it which I had no idea what they were for and it was a lot larger and heavier and and I figured, you know, someone can probably make better use of this uh, than me, you know, if I already got two smaller scopes, I might as well not be greedy. Also that one had, uh, that one wasn't in quite as good shape as uh, the other ones were. It had a, a missing knob and had some scratches on it and stuff. So I've tested all three of these and uh, as far as I can tell all of them work perfect which is awesome. So I'm gonna get that one out of the way because I'm not gonna own it for very long but uh, we'll take a look at these two here. So, there's really nothing in particular special about either of these scopes. They're your standard run-of-the-mill analog oscilloscopes. They got, well, I shouldn't have done that. They got CRT displays, but, you know, I forgot it's not glass there. They got this plastic protective shield over it. Same with that one. But, uh, yeah, CRT displays, and they're both dual-channel scopes, both 20 megahertz, and they all got your standard uh, basic feature set on them. I'll just give you a look there. And uh, they both work perfect. This one's got a cool feature. It's got an incandescent backlight to light up the uh, grid here, or graticule as its uh, proper name is. Variable brightness, that's pretty cool. So there's this one, and then down here, this one has a blue filter over the display. This one doesn't, so it's just the standard blue-green teal colored phosphor. Yeah, they're both, they're both your run-of-the-mill scopes. They've got all the features that you would expect on a proper oscilloscope, but nothing more. Well, that's fine by me. That's all I needed. That's why I didn't take that larger, fancier one. You know, I've never owned my own oscilloscope, so why be greedy and grab one that has more features than I know how to use? But uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. So there will be a video on both of these to come, their own individual video. But first, of course, before I make those videos, I gotta get the uh, proper equipment so that I can properly demonstrate them. Um, these, of course, use the standard BNC connectors to connect uh, a probe or leads or whatever and I don't have anything that can connect to those so I've gone on eBay I've bought a BNC to banana plug adapter and I've bought a standard oscilloscope probe both of them just really cheap China things but uh, the adapter you know that's not really an issue it's just an adapter as for the probe probes a slightly more complicated device there can be a difference in quality between cheap ones and good ones the probe I got on eBay cost me like six dollars Whereas a decent probe from someone like Tektronix will cost like $100, $150. But uh, I, I read online, uh, in particular I went on to EEV blog where someone reviewed 
uh, these really cheap eBay probes and turns out they're actually just fine. They work pretty much just as well as name brand probes and of course it should be just fine for me because uh, even these cheap eBay probes are rated up to 100 megahertz. Well, the fastest thing that I can think of that I'll ever measure with these would be the output of electronic fluorescent lamp ballast. So you're talking at most a few hundred kilohertz, which is super slow compared to what either these scopes or the uh, cheap probe I bought is rated for. So I should be absolutely fine with that cheap probe. So yeah, once I get those items, I'll be able to review both of these scopes. Kind of interesting, both of these scopes are from companies I had never heard of before. Not that I can name every oscilloscope manufacturer off the top of my head, but the ones that I can name include Tektronix, Rigel, Hewlett Packard, and the company that used to be Hewlett Packard's uh, instruments division, now called Agilent, and Philips. Um, those are the ones I can name off the top of my head. I'd never heard of either of these two. Well, I've heard of Gold Star, but I never knew they made test equipment. Gold Star is, of course, the company today known as Lucky Gold Star, or LG. And after they became LG, their uh, test equipment division was called LG Precision Company Limited. Now, that division of the company is called LIG Nexwan. And as far as I know, they no longer make laboratory equipment. They now make military equipment, missiles and stuff. As for Iwatsu, I'd never heard of them at all, but uh, evidently they were quite popular because, you know, we still have a ton of analog oscilloscopes lying around at school. Not ones that are in use, but, you know, in the labs where we now run Rigel DS1052E digital oscilloscopes, um, you can look high up on the shelves near the ceiling and there's tons of oscilloscopes of a brand name I couldn't make out with my own eyes, so I think it might have been Iwatsu. But uh, given that there was a dozen of these, outside the tech shop. I would guess that the school bought a lot of them back in the day. But I'd never heard of them, but upon looking them up, um, they're pretty good scopes. They still make scopes today, and uh, they're apparently fairly popular. Well, there you go, guys. That's all I'm going to show for these oscilloscopes for now. I'll uh, make an individual video of each of these once I get the equipment that I need to uh, properly demonstrate them. But yeah, I'm really happy to have these. I've always wanted an oscilloscope, and especially in the past few years, I've really been able to make use of one. But of course, they cost money to get one, so I've just, I've just never had one. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to have these, and I'll definitely be able to make use of them, including in some future YouTube videos. So yeah, I dare say these are a very nice surprise, especially after my recent brush with death. Well, I wasn't really in any sort of danger, but I was scared to death. So yeah, these are a nice reparation after that. And you know, these are these might be technically obsolete. Analog oscilloscopes aren't made anymore. Um, Tektronix made their last ones in 1996. And Iwatsu actually had a full lineup until 2011. And then they thinned it out down to just three models, which they ultimately discontinued in 2014. So, you know, analog oscilloscopes are technically obsolete now, but they're still incredibly useful, just as useful as digital oscilloscopes. You know, digital oscilloscopes might have fancy features like the ability to store a waveform, a static waveform on the screen that you can analyze and you know they can do they can automatically do things like calculate voltages and the frequency and the waveform period and all that sort of stuff and they can automatically trigger so you don't have to set the trigger so yeah they do all that fancy stuff but analog oscilloscopes are still just as useful and they're still a very valid piece of equipment even in professional work and that brings me to something that I would like to discuss for any of you who uh, might also be looking for your very first oscilloscope um, probably you know if you're if you're not terribly experienced with oscilloscopes one of the most uh, prominent and enticing options you might come across for your first oscilloscope is one of those cheap little uh, things that like plug into a USB port so you know they run on battery power and they plug into USB so they can display everything right on the computer and some of them might have a display and you know they're based on really uh, simple integrated hardware like an FPGA or whatever 
And uh, in my opinion, and it's not just my opinion, I'm echoing what many people online have said, but I wholeheartedly agree with them. Um, don't bother with one of those little dinky scopes. Um, they're not a real oscilloscope. You know, they're fine if you just want to see a waveform on the screen, but they're not that great for much else besides that. They're not a real, they're not a real professional tool. They're not a, le a real laboratory tool. And even for hobby use, you know, you're not going to get as much of them as you can out of a real oscilloscope. So I say, and again, I'm echoing what a lot of people have said, if you're looking for your first oscilloscope and you don't have a ton of money to spend to get a new digital scope, um, just go on eBay or wherever and get a used analog scope. You know, there's tons. The, the used market is absolutely flooded in old analog oscilloscopes. And you can get them fairly cheaply. You can get a tested, good working unit on eBay for like as little as $50 shipped. And, you know, these might be old and they might not be as fancy as what the digital scopes have to offer now, but they're still a real oscilloscope. They were designed properly. They are accurate. They are useful. And uh, they're a very fine tool. And I think maybe one misconception that uh, a lot of newbies have uh, regarding analog oscilloscopes is that they're harder to use than digital oscilloscopes. Well, that's not the case at all. Digital oscilloscopes were modeled after analog oscilloscopes. Like 90% of the functionality is exactly the same. Now, of course, a lot of digital oscilloscopes have a big auto button on them. You just press that button once and it does everything for you. It sets the triggering, it sets the time base, it sets the uh, voltage per division. Okay, that's well and good, but if all you do is learn to press that auto button, you're not, you haven't really learned how to properly use an oscilloscope. So yeah, you know, if you want to pr really learn how to use an oscilloscope properly, you're not going to use that auto. You're going to do it by hand using all these knobs. And it might look intimidating, but it's really not. All these knobs are pretty much the minimum feature set for any proper oscilloscope. And I dare say, because analog scopes don't have all the fancy new features that digital scopes have, I dare say analog scopes are even easier to use. So yeah, if you're looking for your first oscilloscope, don't, don't be tempted by those cheap USB things. Just get a used, old, real oscilloscope. They are absolutely fine, and they're still an excellent tool. And uh, heck, if you're as lucky as me, if you go to a college or a university where they have tons of these lying around that have been decommissioned, you might be able to get some for free. My god, I got three of them for free. So that's totally awesome. So yeah, if you're looking for your first oscilloscope and you just want to get your feet wet, you don't want to spend too much money, just go ahead and get a used analog scope and uh, you can't go wrong. Well, there you go, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. More of these scopes to come once my equipment comes in. And I'm really interested to uh, test some things with these scopes. One of the foremost things I'd like to do is take a look at the waveform of uh, some battery-powered fluorescent lamp ballasts. So uh, I'll make a video of that when I get to it. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you later.